we've got horrendous rain coming down today and uh, the next few days it sounds like so I've been kind of doing inside stuff I'm working on fondant so I made a creation that is similar to what I expected it to come out as um, it's a softer pliable sugar cake that we can put on top of these so they can get access to sugar right all over their head um, so I've got a video that John from Baddest Bees sent me about making fondant now this gal is making fondant for a cake so she uh, she needs it to be really nice and smooth and creamy and stuff um, I attempted to powder my own sugar because it doesn't won't have cornstarch in it um, cornstarch is a little hard on the bees if they can't get out and move around so I wanted to limit that but uh, when I powdered my sugar there's still some granulars in it it's a lot smaller granulars but it doesn't go in as well as it would if it was completely powdered um, and I'll show you that here in a little bit but it still goes in better than it would if it was left alone so anyway we're going to uh, get set up here and, and get this started um, and then I'll try to turn the camera on and off and get you the clips you need show you what I'm doing I've taken a glob of it and uh, put it on the wax paper and it's not really sticky but it would get a little sticky again if I kept working it too much thought with this wax paper if I make some cuts in it like I do a pollen patty um, they'll get up into it and work it as they need to it won't be just running and gooing all over the, the colony so now I'm rolling it out thin enough that I can get it over the top of a big space on their uh, on top of the cluster um, say it's barely even trying to stick to the top side but that's what I'm gonna do and then get them spread out so they can cool um, then we'll be ready to put them on the bees so we're gonna start with a bag of marshmallows um, just cheap Winco marshmallows but you want them to be fresh you know not old dried crunchy ones that are in the camp gear from last summer so we're gonna microwave these um, we're gonna put it in for two minutes and we'll check it before it gets done it seems like it took um, pretty close to that last time so in the mixing bowl how to get it on here we want to put some shortening just vegetable shortening which I had to go buy because I didn't have any I don't use very much anymore used to use a lot of it but now we usually use lard but I didn't have any of that either so I'm just gonna put uh, couple of good scoops in there because again we're not trying to make a perfect recipe um, you know where we can do it the same every time I don't do that sort of stuff anyway let's see how we're doing here all right we're not bubbled up yet that will bubble and get uh, very large before we're done so when that comes out you want to have some water to help break it away from the edge of the bowl uh, it doesn't take very much water but if you wanted to add some other things in here like uh, some honey bee healthy or some salt or vinegar or something you could probably add some to the water but again you're not adding much water so it won't be a big deal so they're still not puffing up yet I'll uh, come back when they do all right they have puffed up so that's what we're after just turn them back into uh 
soft, fluffy stuff. So we want just a little water around the edge. And then we'll take our spoon and work it, work it away from the edge of the bowl so it's not stuck to the bowl and get it to collapse and just turn into a big ball of marshmallow fluff. So we'll go ahead and work this down and we'll get back. All right, I've added seven cups of the sugar that I powdered in the shop earlier today into this bowl with the marshmallow stuff. Um, it took me about nine last time to get it done, so um, I'm going to lock it and start working it in. So we have the dough hook on and we're going to knead in that uh, powdered sugar and uh, turn it into like dough. So one thing fondant has in it that makes it pliable is vegetable glycerin. And in the recipe she adds some uh, regular fondant into it to add the glycerin and make it more pliable. Here I'm just going to add a little bit in there. Two, three tablespoons. John says he uses three tablespoons, so something like that in there. And we'll just go ahead and knead this for a while and get back. All right, I've added another couple of cups of sugar in here. I think about two and a half, and it's starting to get pretty thick and working the machine a lot. So I'm going to take it out of there and get it on the uh, cutting board and knead it in by hand from here. So we'll get set up over there. So I put a little shortening on my hands so that this stuff doesn't stick and I can get it out of the bowl. That poor old mixer has made too many pollen patties and uh, it's straining it. I'd like to run it a little bit longer, but I don't need to burn it up. And when I get the dough hook fixed for the big mixer, I'll probably be doing these in the big mixer. Because with the amount of bees that I want to feed with this, um, it's going to take a lot of it. But the last batch that I just made, I actually... So it's a one pound bag of marshmallows and when I was done I was almost six pounds of product so into that one bag of marshmallows I worked five pounds of sugar um, and it, it, it's a nice soft pliable mixture probably enough to get going with here so just like working bread and eating bread you're going to keep adding instead of flour you're going to add sugar and you're going to add sugar to your to your uh, work table so it doesn't stick to it and then you're just going to keep working that in and uh, kneading it in and eventually this will get really stiff and it'll get cooler then I'll put it in the microwave and heat it so that I can work even more in because um, I don't want it to turn into a liquid when it's in the colony and the bees are warming it up so if they've got it up to you know 90 degrees in their colony where this is at I don't want it running down and dripping on their heads so um, I'll just keep working this and then we'll come back all right, I worked another entire cup of sugar into that. Then I put it in a greased bowl 
some shortening in it so it wouldn't stick and put it in the microwave. And now it's very soft again. So now I can get more in it. It's almost uh, too hot to touch, which is great because the bees won't get it that hot. So if I can get it to the point of being fairly stiff at that temperature, then the bees aren't going to turn it into a liquid. So this is real similar to what I did making candy plugs for the queen cages this year. And my first attempt at that, um, it was too runny. And when they warmed it up, it would run on the bees. So I'll probably be able to get another cup or two in here. So <clears throat> I was able to knead in another two cups of sugar and I'm at five and a half pounds on my scale. So there was a pound of marshmallows. That means that I put four and a half pounds of sugar into this marshmallow glob. Um, now I'm gonna break it into pieces and put it on some uh, wax paper and roll it out so we can get it thin enough to get in the hive. I've taken a glob of it and uh, put it on the wax paper and it's not really sticky but it would get a little sticky again if I kept working it too much. thought with this wax paper if I make some cuts in it like I do a pollen patty um, they'll get up into it and work it as they need to it won't be just running and gooing all over the, the colony so now I'm rolling it out thin enough that I can get it over the top of a big space on their uh, on top of the cluster. Um, you say it's barely even trying to stick to the top side, but that's what I'm going to do, and then get them spread out so they can cool. Um, then we'll be ready to put them on the bees.